Hey everybody, welcome to Shenyang, the capital city of Liaoning province. We just got here and we are at the north station. So it would be Shenyang, Beijing. Took the high speed rail to get here. Just give you a quick glimpse when you come out. See a lot of big buildings. I'm not familiar with this area. I've been out here before, but I don't know the area well. Just want to show you what it looks like when you get here. And I'm actually going to go back in and get the subway. I just got off the train, but I just wanted you guys to see what it looks like. It's a lot of train stations in China. Many of them are connected to the subway line. So like for me, I just got here. I can get directly from the train station to the subway without leaving the building. It's ultra convenient. You can see everything's got English translations as well. So you shouldn't have any problem. Come over here to the ticket machines. Line one. Oh, how you that? Once your payment goes through, your ticket will come out. Go through the security check. crowded on here already. It's pretty nice too because they've got these screens here and they tell you how long till the next train. Like here the next train's coming in one minute and then the following train will be another seven minutes. All right we're back out into natural sunlight again. And the first place I'm gonna take you all, I mean, there's a lot of options here in Shenyang, like for museums and stuff. I told you, I don't like to make videos where I just take you to museums and whatnot. I think it's, for most viewers, except for like hardcore Chinese history buffs, it's gonna be kind of boring. So I do wanna go one place, I've been there before. Just gonna take a quick tour, show you guys around. It's the Imperial Palace from the Qing Dynasty. It was built like 400 years ago. There's a very original slogan. Go for it, just do it. <laughs> they didn't get any ideas from Nike or anything like that. <laughs> and here you go with the shared bikes. China says this is one of their great inventions. Actually, it, it's actually not, but they do have a lot of them. And they've made, I would probably say they've made the use of them a lot more like widespread in the country than anywhere else. And you can see everywhere. You can just use your phone and use WeChat. And now you can get e-bikes too. You can rent an e-bike as well. I'll be honest, this is the first time I've seen them renting out e-bikes. Now, like I said, I've been out here before. It's been a long time, but I have been out here. And this area around the uh, old Imperial Palace, the area all around it's got this really cool Chinese architecture. If you come here, you will like the, the atmosphere. I'm sure of it. Give you guys a quick Chinese test. Look at this cool looking building in front of me. You can see the sign right there. Two characters. Do you know what it is? It's a supermarket. I mean, you can see right away. The whole area is cool. The walk up to here is cool. And then when you get here, it's more of the same. Actually, it gets even better. You know, when you come traveling to China, this is, I mean, this is what we think of, right? And just behind these walls is the Imperial Palace. We're in. I'm not gonna go through a full tour. I just want you all to see this. I mean, you know, it's been here. It's, this was constructed 400 years ago. Imperial Palace. It's pretty cool, right? And this place is like vlog friendly, you know? It's not standing in a dimly lit museum that you have to be quiet or you're not allowed to film in. First, we're just taking a quick look around and I'm gonna go in this main facility. We'll sneak peek in here. So this is where the Imperial Palace was before it moved to Beijing. Wow. A lot of tour guides here. I mean, you can join a tour and they've got like an English recording, a headset you can listen to. And 
if you speak Chinese, you can just easily walk alongside a tour and hear what they're saying. But there's signs here that kind of explain what you need to know. Of course, if you take the tour, they'll give you a lot of the more you know, juicy, interesting details. But for me, like I said, I've been through that. I just want you guys to get the basic feel of what it's like here. Because it is quite an experience, you know? If you're in Shenyang and you don't come here, it's kind of, it's kind of a waste, really. You kind of have to come here, you know? These people on a tour, they've got their tour guide and whatnot. So here's a look inside. And like I was saying earlier, a lot of these facilities here were for concubines. Like these guys were big time into concubines. I just did a good deed for the day. Uh, I saw three women. These were a little bit older women. They're probably around 60 years old. And I could tell they wanted a group photo, but they felt awkward to ask somebody. So I just walked over and said, hey, would y'all like a hand? And they were like, oh, sure. I was like, I know how it is, you know, when you want to get a group picture, but you don't want to bug anybody by asking them. I said, so I'm glad to do it. So they were very happy about that. And <laughs> bit off a little more than a bargained for because then they had me like taking individual photos of them and stuff and it was fine you know, I was I was happy to do it it was funny and they're very pleased you can see a lot of people come here for photography they want to get photo shoots of themselves wearing the old you know garbs from the previous dynastic era I think I said that right it's pretty damn cool We've headed to the back, sort of a more quiet garden type of area. I prefer it back here. Like, it's actually really peaceful and quiet back here. Like, can you imagine if this wasn't a tourist area and you could just walk around here? It was quiet, wasn't crowded. You could just sit and have a have some tea or coffee, whatever you want. Definitely an awesome atmosphere. But just to give you an idea, the Imperial Palace in Beijing is about 12 times bigger than this. So comparatively speaking, this is pretty small. But actually, it's fine with me because I don't really need to walk around a place 12 times bigger than this. I mean, don't get me wrong, if I go to Beijing, I'm going there. But uh, for today, I'm... I'm kind of happy this place is sort of small. Like I said, this is just a brief, quick tour, and I've been here several times before. And apparently this is where the emperor would come when he wanted to talk about, have meetings or talk about military affairs. See, it's very ornate. See the sign there, the Imperial Palace of the Qing Dynasty in Shenyang, World Culture Heritage. Also, I did something that I think is pretty funny at this uh, Imperial Palace, Gugong. I saw two foreign guys. One was obviously the father and one was a young guy who was probably in his mid-twenties and his, I'm assuming, Chinese girlfriend. And I was just kind of walking next to him and then they kind of slowed down and I slowed down and I looked at the guy. I thought they were maybe from like, I don't know, somewhere in Europe. I told them, I said, uh, I said, I'm just pretending that we're in the same family. <laughs> and then the guy, he could understand me. He started laughing. The uh, father, he started laughing and, uh, and the young guy's English was pretty good. And, and I said, yes, many people here would believe that. They would believe we are in the same family. And then they were all laughing. Then I said, where are you guys from? They're actually from Russia. Okay, so we're just leaving the Imperial Palace and just a hop, skip, and a jump away is Zhongjie, which is the pedestrian street. If you guys follow my videos, you know that pretty much all cities in China have a walking street or a pedestrian street. It's always a good place to check out. It's always a good place to kind of get your bearings in a city. And if you're just somewhere and you don't know what to do, 
walking street is a good place to go because if nothing else it's a good place to people watch they're gonna have tons of different shops a lot of different foods and snacks so you always be able to find something to do and we are walking there now it's not far at all from the imperial palace straight ahead is a food street a bunch of those little food stalls and then just next to that is a pretty pretty unique looking place a uh, pretty nice looking place a place that you can't miss it's the uh it's the, it's a theater here where they do acting comedy northeastern style skits the northeast is pretty well known for humor and their style of comedy they're also known for a type of singing it's more of a countryside thing a uh, type of folk humor and uh folk art it's called arindran and it's like two people a male and a female singing together it's interesting to hear i mean it's not something you're going to want to sit around and listen to but if you come to china especially if you're in the northeast you'll probably come across it i'm going to check out this food street real quick I, you know I've, I've passed this but i've never actually walked through i'm just going to briefly walk through because i've got i've got lunch plans today so i'm not going to be eating anything here but i've never been back here Taco King. Be great if they were actually good tacos, but I kind of doubt it. Anyhow, taco. Watch out for these, these guys on their bikes burning through. Yeah, a lot of these things are closed, but I mean, it's early in the day. Come nighttime, that's when they'll. Uh, that's when things will really be booming around here. So you can see, it goes back. Lots of food, some little hotels. So yeah, and this is basically just across the street from the walking street. No, if I, well, not if I remember correctly, I definitely remember correctly. There used to be a Papa John's pizza right over here. Now that's been a long time. Since then we've had COVID. Well, yeah, we've had COVID. That pretty much changes everything. And it looks like, I believe Papa John's was right there. You see that little lower level place that extends out just above it. I'm sure that was Papa John's. Oh, you can see right there. Better ingredients, better pizza. That was Papa John's. It's closed. Bummer. That's not what I was going to get anyway, but. And here we are. Like a five, 10 minute walk from the Imperial Palace here at the pedestrian street. And you can see this one's nice, it's huge. And it's got a, a security guard kind of blocking my view. See right there on the red it says Shenyang Zhongjie Buxingjie. Shenyang Zhongjie. Zhongjie is the name of the street and then Buxingjie is uh, pedestrian street. Mickey D's over here. But yeah, this is uh, as, as far as pedestrian streets go, this one is, it's pretty nice, you know, it's very wide, it looks nice, it's clean. But if you come here during a, a busy hour, you would not believe how many people you would see here. I'm here at an off hour, and I'm happy about that. <laughs> because if I came here at a peak hour, oh my goodness, it's just chaos. Some people like that kind of feeling, I personally don't. I'm not big on crowds. Here's Lei Feng right here. He was a, a character from the Cultural Revolution, the Mao era. People were told to try to be like him because he was like the exemplary citizen. Always doing nice things for people. So you'll see his picture around quite a bit. And I like to make jokes because sometimes you'll see with taxis with his picture on it, it'll say like a uh, Leifeng taxi. And I'll say, oh great, a Leifeng taxi. That means it's free, right? <laughs> you always want to do nice things to help people. <laughs> It's just a funny joke, and the, the locals usually like it quite a bit. They think it's funny. And here's a guy down on his luck, a homeless guy. Down on his luck. At least you can get some fresh fruit juice and whatnot. Oh, that looks good. And then just over here, you got new Bailun. So I'm guessing that's fake, fake New Balance. I don't even like the real New Balance. Maybe I would like the fake New Balance better than the real one. Now it's getting a little bit busier out here. A little bit more going on. A little more crowded area of uh, pedestrian street. Lots of people, lots of food, lots of snacks. Uh, you will have people greet you if you're a foreigner here and 
you always have chances to meet people and if you want to practice Chinese, this would be a good place to do it. It's not a hard place to strike up a conversation with somebody. And if you're a single guy, you know, wouldn't maybe not a bad place to uh, say hello to a lady or a man if that happens to be, you know, your thing. At night, that would look great. All food stalls. You might be surprised to see. Get ready. You ready for it? DQ. <laughs> yep, yeah, that's right. You can find DQ in some cities of China. There's a Yoshinoya Japanese beef bowl. DQ if you need your ice cream fix. Luckin coffee, which uh, it's just like a Chinese version of Starbucks, basically. The KFC. KFCs are everywhere in China. Well, that's gonna pretty much wrap it up for this little tour of the walking street, the pedestrian street, whatever you wanna call it. And the next stop, it's food time, you guys. I'm going to a restaurant that was recommended to me and I'm intentionally taking these kind of quiet back roads just to show you what things are like kind of behind the scenes, not on the main drag where everything's flashy and fancy. You know, I wanted to show you the kind of quiet, simple side of life. So you got the, they got the yellow school bus. Look at the way that arm's flapping. That dude is too cool for school. That's a hell of a strut. Come on, you know it is. One of these deadly Dongbei roundabouts. When I used to drive in China, I saw accidents on these roundabouts like every damn day. Just fender benders and stuff. I never saw anybody seriously hurt, but people are always having fender benders and little accidents there. And on our way, got some more interesting scenery for you guys. Oh, very vivid and beautiful. I forgot what these kind of flowers are called. Look at that. Wow, that's massive. the expressions on those faces they are not messing around well that guy looks pretty happy at least you can see he's got a little smile on his face I mean these things seriously I don't know how many fatalities there are for pedestrians but they're they're a little dangerous let's just say that you got to pay attention when you're crossing these things one wrong step and it could be your last step. I'm gonna pop in here and just see if they've got anything that looks good. So, let's have a look. Uh, they actually have quite a few English books, but a lot of it's classics and just stuff I'm not particularly interested in. But they've got more than I expected. I'll give them that. I've been told that this place has authentic Western food and I'm just curious to check it out and see what they've got. Apparently it's called a Rouge Bar and Cafe. It's definitely a serious bar. I'll do one quick walkthrough. You can see here, obviously they've got live music some nights, which would be fun, depending on who the band is. <laughs> Could be good or bad. Could be a good thing or a bad thing. And I'll give you a quick walk through this place. Just a little kind of private room area. Got some booze ball here. Well, my first little treat arrived. We've got chicken quesadillas, of course. Decided to treat myself to a beer today. I deserve it. I don't care what anybody says, I deserve it. Chicken quesadillas, they look legit. I've got another little thing on the way. You'll see it soon. Well, besides the fact that they're playing Frosty the Snowman in here, literally, that's what's on right now. A little bit out of season. Chicken quesadilla, it's it's decent. And then I've also got this margarita pizza. I don't think I'll be able to finish all this, but I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff my face. I'll eat as much as I can and just skip dinner tonight. Well, the pizza is solid. The chicken quesadillas are good too, but the, the pizza is really good. If you're in the area, this is definitely a place I could recommend. Yeah, overall, I would definitely give this place a big thumbs up. And right next door, 
Look what you've got. Enthusiasm Zebra. Looks like they're out of business. And uh, no offense, but based on that name, you couldn't expect to be too successful. Well, here we are back at the Shenyang North Station. Just out front, this is what it looks like. And I really hope that you all have enjoyed this hangout today. Just uh, walking around the city, seeing a few different areas. And uh, if you did enjoy the video, please go ahead and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, I really need you guys' support. Drop me a comment in the comment section below. And if you want to go that extra mile, you can always find me on Patreon. On Patreon, I'll share some like daily photos and stories of just about my experiences here day to day in China. Things that I don't share anywhere else. So yeah, that's going to be it. Now it's just basically get in here, get my train ticket and get going. But rest assured, more trips are on the way. A whole lot more. See you guys in the next video. Shiatsu. Zaijian. A lot of folks here, folks. Folks everywhere. Everywhere. Got some bonus footage for y'all. Beijing bikini.